Hello my friends, JR Dukes with JRDukes.com coming at you with another video. Today I want to talk and share my views concerning the Gabby Petito case. Obviously as of the making of this video, Brian Laundrie is still on the run. Specifically, I love talking about issues relating to the law, relating to police, police activity. I like to talk about things pertaining to the law that can save you a lot of trouble if you're ever in a police or a legal situation yourself. So today I want to talk about seven reasons why Brian Laundrie is doing the right thing in as much as not talking to the police. So let's get right into it. First, I want to get into a few personal observations that I have about this particular case and a few things that uh, frankly uh, trouble me. The news keeps talking about how sinister this Brian Laundry guy is, how he seemed like he was uh, basically taking advantage of those police officers out in Utah, how he is some kind of alleged mastermind able to manipulate Gabby and able to manipulate the police. And I find that frankly laughable. I took the time and actually reviewed the entire hour, hour and a half videotape that was released by the police department there in Utah. I actually made some notes and I wanted to share these notes with you. In brief, as far as the news is concerned, I have heard very little as to what I would consider the truth. First of all, the police officers, when you watch the video, they did a very thorough and good job of trying to figure out what was going on and trying to piece the puzzle together. As a matter of fact, when the police showed up, it was very clear to the police officers that Gabby was actually the primary aggressor in this particular situation. On the videotape, it's very clear that the police noticed that Brian Laundrie had scratches on different parts of his body and his face and as a matter of fact, they even specifically mentioned that his eye socket was swollen from being hit by Gabby. After interviewing Brian, the police were very clear about their belief that Gabby was the primary aggressor and that Brian was simply trying to de-escalate the particular situation that was going on. It is clear to me from the video that Gabby was definitely having and has been having in the past some kind of mental crisis. I'm not sure if it's simply anxiety or exactly what it was, but clearly she had some issues that she was dealing with and obviously needed to deal with. And the way it comes across in the video is that Brian Laundrie was simply trying to calm his fiance down. She was obviously very upset. She even admitted to taking the steering wheel and trying to yank it over to the side. Obviously, both of these individuals have some kind of problem, have some troubles, have some issues. It's obvious if you watch that video, it's very obvious to me, it should be very obvious to anybody watching that video, that Gabby had some serious issues and Brian was trying trying to do the very best he could to mitigate the situation. One police officer even made the comment on the tape that was released to the public that it was very clear that Brian was simply trying to protect his fiance. I wanted to point out something here too. Sometimes I feel like I'm living in the twilight zone. You turn on the TV and it's really interesting. People see what they want to see. I heard a so-called expert on TV say that the fact that Gabby right away admitted to the police officers that she has been hitting Brian and was the primary aggressor that somehow proved that she was somehow an abused person. And that simply is incredulous. That doesn't make any sense. That's absolutely asinine. I never, it never ceases to amaze me the talking heads that they put on the TV news. The police officer specifically mentioned and videotaped the fact that Brian Laundrie had a injured and inflamed right eye. He also clearly had marks on his face and on his body, including scratches and other types of marks, and even had marks on the back of his head. On the video, Gabby admits that she is on some kind of new medication, that either she was taking medication in the past or just started back on medication. I wasn't really sure exactly what she was saying, but clearly she was in the process of being treated for some kind of psychiatric problem that she didn't specifically say what it was other than anxiety. I encourage you to actually Google the actual video or look it up on YouTube and go ahead and watch the full video. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. One other thing that I want to be clear on by giving my opinions on this 
particular case. In no form or fashion am I trying to say anything negative against Gabby or Brian for that matter. Obviously what has happened is a tragedy and a very sad situation, but I have to tell you, after reviewing everything, both of these kids seem like they were very much in love. They seem like two young adults traveling the country that were very much in love with each other. I did not see any evidence to the contrary other than the fact that there was obviously some kind of emotional problems going on as far as uh, Gabby is concerned and she obviously needed some help for those particular problems. But just because she is now dead doesn't mean that we can't look at all the facts, try to figure out what has happened to this beautiful young woman. Interestingly, when you look at the video, it is very clear that at first the police officers had every intention on arresting Gabby. That was their first decision was to go ahead and arrest her as the primary aggressor. As they got talking to Brian and talking to Gabby, they started switching gears and they decided, hey, we got to find a way other than arrest her. The comment that was made is that the statute doesn't specifically state that we have to actually arrest one of them, we can go ahead and just basically give her a ticket. That, over time, involved into the police officer making a decision to simply split them up for the night. Would you hang on one second for me, please? As I was saying, both of these kids seem like they were young lovers, having a great time traveling the country. And both of these kids, at least up until the incident happened, seemed like really good kids. The police officers that were there seemed like they were impressed with both of them. As a matter of fact, it was noted that neither one of these kids even drank. They didn't even drink alcohol. I mean, these, these kids were pretty, well, you're all American kids, so to speak. It is obviously sad and tragic what happened. Having said this, it's also tragic and upsetting to me the way that the parents are under the gun, the way the parents are being hounded. It reminds me of the old western days where you would simply tar and feather somebody and run them out of town because you didn't like what they did or what they said or who they were associated with. We have to remember in this country we are supposed to be innocent until proven guilty and we simply do not know Brian's side of this particular case. We just simply don't know what we don't know. We don't know if Gabby left at some point with somebody else. We just simply don't know what his side of events are. Admittedly, it doesn't look good, but at the same time, we don't know what we don't know. What I do want to point out is with the fact there is such a tremendous amount of press and a lot of interest in this case, the fact that Brian Laundry was wise enough not to talk to the police is frankly a good example for all of us in the unfortunate event that we are to have some kind of interaction with law enforcement. So this is kind of a backwards way of looking at this matter, but I think it's very important that I point out these seven facts, these seven things that Brian Laundry has done or not done that we can all learn a lesson from when it comes to dealing with the police. And we're going to get into it right now. One comment concerning his parents is that, at least in the state of Florida, we need to remember that if our kids were to come to us after committing some kind of crime and we gave them some kind of comfort, some kind of support, there is really no crime under state law. As a matter of fact, Florida state law strictly forbids the state from prosecuting parents after the fact concerning a crime. Now, other states have different rules. For example, Georgia has a completely different rule than Florida. But I think if we're all intellectually honest with ourselves, if we had our children come to us after committing some kind of crime, doesn't necessarily have to be murder, let's just pretend it's some kind of crime. I think if we're intellectually honest with ourselves, we can't say for certain that we would not help our children. I can tell you straight up that I love my children very deeply and very dearly. And if after the fact they had a problem, I would do what I could to help steer them in the right direction. I would not necessarily want to help them run from the law, but I sure as hell would want to make sure they had a lawyer, they had representation, and they knew what I'm about to teach you when it comes to dealing with the police. All right, the first thing that Brian Laundrie has done correctly is not talking to the police because the police believe that everybody is guilty, period. I have had extensive interaction with the police in my lifetime, not in a criminal way necessarily, just in the scope of business. I've had many friends that are lawyers, many friends that were criminal defense lawyers. I know how the system works and I know how police think. I have had personal interactions with the police that I'll get into at a later date, but I will tell you this, the police 
generally speaking, they have seen a lot of bad things. They have seen a lot of crazy things in this world. They've seen a lot of bad people. It's only human nature. It's only their nature that when something happens, they suspect everyone. They, in their minds, no matter how they try to look at it differently, are going to think you're guilty. They're going to think you did it. The second reason you should never talk to the police for any reason is because the police can actually harm your chance of a fair trial by leaking information to the press. As a matter of fact, their conduct by leaking potential information to the press could actually cause you to be found guilty even if you're not innocent. And if you don't believe that, just think back mm, about 20 years now to the Scott Peterson case out in California. There has been a lot of evidence that has came to light that has shed, at least in my mind, some considerable doubt as to whether or not he was the one that killed his wife and his unborn son. One of the main things that kind of sticks in my mind is the fact that when questioned by the police, Scott told the police I was fishing at the marina. Well, they released that information to the uh, general public. Guess where her body was found? Her son, his son, and Lacey's body was found in the marina. Obviously, the uh, suspicion is if Scott didn't commit the murder, the person or people that did commit the murder heard on the news that he was fishing in a particular spot and when they killed Lacey they took her to that particular marina and that's where they disposed of the body. Who knows? At any rate I sure wouldn't want to be Scott Peterson and have that information released to the public. The third reason on my list is if you talk to the police and let's say, to be polite, they misremember something you told them. You are screwed. Just that simple. You're screwed. How's that going to look to a jury? How's that going to look to a judge? The police officer is going to get up there and say, uh, yes, this particular defendant told me ABC. And you're going to get up there and say, no, 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 I, I told him X, Y, Z. Well, you really have a serious problem when that happens because you're going to have to convince a jury that not only are you innocent, but that the police officer is either a liar or misremembered. It's just not a good situation to be in. Again, don't talk to the police. Fourth reason on my list not to talk to the police is simply because the police can legally lie to you. I know that comes as a shock to a lot of us. They can legally lie to you. They can say something like, hey, you failed your lie detector test that we have given you. They can tell you anything that they want to tell you. And what can happen if it's done correctly depending on your perspective, correctly or incorrectly, by a aggressive police officer is basically you get into a situation where it can produce what's called a false confession. It's just not going to be to your interest to talk to the police and take a chance of going through all their tricks and procedures. So don't do it. Don't talk to them. Another important reason to not talk to the police is if you are guilty and you talk to the police and let's just say you admit, you say, hey, I did it. Okay, I'm guilty. Well, that's it. They arrest you. You go to jail. At that point, you have nothing to bargain with in front of a judge, in front of the prosecuting attorney's office. There's no, no reason for them to cut you any slack. Generally, the way the system works is, let's say you're facing 20 years for some kind of particular crime. And what they may do, they may offer you five years or 10 years if you go ahead and admit what you did. That way they don't have to spend time and resources prosecuting you. This is simply the way the system works. If you don't believe me, just watch 48 hours on TV and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. The people that talk, they get life. The people that do not talk, generally they walk out of there with 10, 15, 20 years maybe. Let's put it this way, 20 years is a long time, but it's a hell of a lot better than life. The next reason not to talk to the police is the reverse of what I just said. What if you are actually innocent? and you talk to the police and you say something incorrect, but you didn't mean to say something incorrect. Let's say you told them the truth. At that point, they can find a witness that can impeach your testimony and you got a major problem again. You got somebody else, another hurdle that you have to overcome in front of a judge, in front of a jury, that you have to convince them that the other person is wrong, the other person misheard, the other person made a mistake. It is just another hurdle, another obstacle, another problem that you do not need to give yourself when you're trying to prove your innocence. Again, do not talk to the police. The final reason why you should never talk to the police and why Brian Laundry, in my opinion, is doing the correct thing and not talking to the police is because talking to the police can never 
help you, period. It's just that simple. It can never help you. It can only hurt you. If you are arrested and the police have the evidence, it's just time to have a trial. You need a professional defense lawyer in your corner to help you go through the legal process. It's just that simple. And that's the reason why a lot of people do it. They think, oh my goodness, I can't handle this pain. I just got arrested. I see my life flashing before my eyes. Uh, my life is over. I, I just can't handle this incarceration. I'm scared to death. And most people crack. Most people just say whatever they have to say to get out of there, whether or not it's true. Do not be that person. You need to teach yourself to remain calm, stay focused, understand how the process works. You need to get yourself a lawyer. You need not to say anything to the police whatsoever. You want to be polite. You want to be professional. You want to be calm. And most importantly, you want to ask for a lawyer. And once you're in custody, you want to invoke your Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination and shut up. It's just that simple. At any rate, I appreciate you joining me today for this uh, short video. I wanted to share these points with you. If you are ever in trouble with the law, use this particular video as a resource. Appreciate you joining me today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at reachjrdukes at gmail.com. I'd be happy to respond or listen to any comments that you have. I appreciate you joining me today. Be sure to like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you next time. Until then, remember, I am J.R. Dukes.